Hi Simmers, welcome back to Simpit Academy. We are going to continue looking at how to build panels for a complete cockpit for DCS and the example used is the Strike Eagle. So a word about the logo. It represents everything that is being used um, for this project. In this, this head shows the academy, which will teach you teach us how to use FreeCAD and Arduino to fly any flight sim, which is the wings. So, we start off with FreeCAD. We will look at the left, right, and front console of the Strike Eagle. There are optional parts and panels that are not functional but it helps give you a complete look of the cockpit that you can choose to add later. For example, you can you can build this um, emergency canopy jettison lever. You can add things like this, I don't know what is it called, some kind of handles for the MPD. You can have breakers and the air vents. You can have this DTM receptacle and the canopy lever. Now some disclaimers. And the biggest one is that this is a quick and dirty approach to building panels, knobs, switches. So we will make some compromise in order to get things very fast. For example, I'm using a single panel approach. Um, typically you have top, light and back panels. And we are not doing the light or the back panel. I design everything to be just one layer for every panel. And then we emboss the text and so that we don't have to paint or CNC it. Typically, if you want to CNC, you have to paint, paint a panel white, spray paint it black twice, then CNC it. So we are not doing this method. We are just printing the text on raised uh, 1 mm embossing and then I just use acrylic paint to write on it and you will stand out very well. For combat panels they are standardized at 5 and 3 quarter inches width so that's the only thing I standardize um, the height or the length of the panel is um, just an estimation okay I don't count the Desus holes um, to determine the exact um, length of the panel so a lot of things are estimates and compromise to just make it convenient and fast so that I don't want to I don't have to fuss over <coughs> the accuracy of everything as I don't have the information to what is the real dimensions anyway so FreeCAD is um, easy how you create a body and a sketch you define the shape and the size of the panel you add holes you create some recess for the switch or the nuts you add some text you emboss it and then you add lines if needed you export the STL and you print and you can also download um, free STLs from these websites and in future videos I will show you how to modify them So there is this myth that CAD is expensive and hard to learn. Well, free CAD is free 
and um, I will show you that it is very easy you always go through all these steps once you master it you can design any panel for any aircraft okay we start with uh, clicking new in FreeCAD <coughs> after you have installed it then to create the body you click here on this icon then to create a sketch you click here when you click this it will pop up this window and ask you to choose a plane and almost always you want to use the XY plane as shown here in the yellow okay choose this either click here or click on the picture you do it in the XY plane and then you pad thickness to it and then you have a panel so to have a simple panel like this <coughs> you draw the panel you state the dimensions like this one here 146.05 is the metric equivalent of the standardized uh, 5 and 3 quarter inches width of a combat panel like the F-16, F-18, A-10 they are all the same width so the definition of the height and width of the holes help you align um, if you need to flip it over to make more changes at, at the bottom you know exactly how to align everything so we add the holes and we set the hole sizes here you see the example is 6mm uh, uh, across not radius diameter and then you pad the sketch I use 6mm that I, f I find this is the ideal thickness for my panels and then you may have to add some recesses at the top or bottom to help with the nut or the body of the switch to protrude out better you add some text you pat the text to emboss it and this is what you get very simple panel which you can do in like five minutes now the text that I have for the switches it's slightly smaller than the text I have for the panel so that this um, kind of name of the panel stands out when it's bigger optionally you can round the corners like I fillet the corners 1.5 mm just to make it more curved and you may want to add lines for example here just add the lines um, using like rectangles and then you pad it just like you pad text so sometimes you want to um, create recesses and not only that you want to add um, holes you can see here vertically two holes at the top at the bottom um, you only just need one but I always add a pair because you may sometimes have to flip the toggle around so this will help keep the toggle from rotating for small toggles you can skip this step for bigger toggles um, the force applied on it will be bigger and over time um, the nut becomes loose and the toggle may start to rotate so you want to keep it um, aligned so you look at the distance and the size of the hole vendors will provide uh, data sometimes or you can just estimate and try and error so this example you have a drawing here I don't think the drawing is for this toggle but just to give you an idea they will give you in inches and mm the size of your toggle and the distance of the locking hole from the main toggle and the size of the hole the distance so now this is the correct way to use it um, like this toggle comes with all these two nuts a locking ring and a washer this is Japanese but there's English here 
so you have a nut below a washer and then the locking ring then another nut so this is going to be um, very secure and the toggle is not going to turn so to add text to the panel you have to go into the uh, draft workbench okay normally you are at park part design and you drop down and select draft then on the right of the draft workbench you will see this click on this one this is for single line text this is like the A is like the paragraph so when you click on this this thing pops up okay and then you set the value of the string like basically your text what you want to say this example here is on then you define the height right the font size like this one is 4.5 for most of my switches this is the size I use and then the font type font type you go to Windows fonts and you choose your font I always use this area normal bold the following slides are useful in knowing the dimensions of the uh, shaft holes for the various switches and to show you whether they need locking holes and uh, recesses most of them have bottom recess uh, for parts and encoders I will have additional recess at the top so small toggles I don't even bother with locking holes bigger ones uh, we have locking holes and recess pull to turn toggles are small so smaller sizes rotary switch just one locking hole for this thing here encoder is encoders and parts are very similar in size and this one you see the recess is at the top a little bit of recess at the bottom for the hole dual encoders don't need any recess or locking hole and parts push buttons like indicators for this um, toggle guard there is a groove here that helps lock the toggle or you have the locking hole from this uh, ring here but this thing itself may move so I have the locking hole secured to the top plate and I also have a top recess to stop the um, this guard plate from moving and the two combined will make everything very secure so for small d-shaped shaft um, this is the dimension you want to park it to create a knob that will fit the shaft and this is for the bigger one the two d-shaped shafts okay let's um, try to create a simple panel for three different kinds of switches a toggle a potentiometer and a rotary switch start off with clicking new body sketch xy plane and click here to create a rectangle then you just state the dimensions let's go for the standardized width of combat panels 146.05 then the height will do 60 then click here for circles
we can align them and then we we want this to be about 30 40 40 and for the size of a toggle it's um, 12.5 so click here click this for diameter not radius 12.5 and then for part is 7.5 9.8 okay this is 7.5 9.8 so we have holes for the three different types of switches close this click here pad default will be 10 we want 6 mm thickness <coughs> now um, we can fillet the corners so that they are not so sharp shift with the mouse to rotate okay four corners selected click here fillet I do 1.5 normally okay Now this is the top, we want to go to the bottom, select it, click sketch, create another sketch. The first sketch was to create a panel, the second one is to create recesses. So the toggle recess is 21, 14, 19. Okay, so we create circles again and align them to match the ones at the top Thirty. Forty and forty so the Oh, I need to set the right height okay now we uh, have to fix the height all the um, exact location position of the holes should be specified so that when you need to do another sketch for the top or bottom recess you can align everything properly now we close this and select the bottom as you can see here and create another sketch and we create more circles and align them We don't care about the radius for now, we need to set the positions. Forty forty height is thirty. So now they are in the center. Then we look at 
the dimensions of the recess toggle is 21 and then 14 19 okay so this is the toggle and it is 21 this is just 14 and this is 19 all right close and you do this to park it default is five we just need about three so you can see this is the bottom recess okay on the left is always the toggle even when you rotate to the bottom toggle is always on the left so now we have this so let's name the sketch so that the different sketches so we know which is which so I call this F2 call this main this one I'll call it bottom recess and now we click the bottom and create another sketch and this one will be for the locking rings so same thing create circles and align them first these these circles again are just to know where's the center of the um, the three holes found the center we don't care about the radius because we just need the center and we we'll, to create locking holes we we'll just um, roughly around here and align the three horizontally sorry vertically then it says um, it's kind of hard to see it's 10 mm by 3.5 so this and this it's 10 and this and here it's 10 and then this two are the same radius 3.5 okay then for part locking hole it's 7.8 spacing and 2.8 size so for part and rotor wheel switch you just need one locking hole because there's only one protrusion here to hold it in place so I like to do a horizontal one make this horizontal and then make this 7.8 and the size is 2.8 all right next this is rotary switch it's 9.53 by 3.5 so same thing make a horizontal circle 3.5 all right so now we don't need this anymore you don't want to park it another hole here so select all these reference circles and delete them close this park it about 4.5 deep which is deeper than the recess so now we have locking holes for toggle part and the um, rotary switch okay okay now to add text for the panel don't leave this at an angle so first 
click on top to have it flat down and then click on the panel first select the top surface go to draft workbench and click on the S for single line string or text and click here then when you mouse over <coughs> you see that the uh, Z axis is at 6 meaning that the text will start at the top of the panel and then click somewhere here where you want the text to start then let's say the uh, the text we want for the toggle is on and at 4.5 font is go to windows font 1 2 3 this is my Arial normal bold open up click ok now it might not appear you have to shift and move the mouse a bit then it appears ok now you can move this easily roughly there then you can click on here F2 and rename this so that we know <coughs> what the text represents now we control C control V and create one that is for off the value <coughs> it's still the same here we will click on the second one and move it down once you click OK the um, text will show a different value ok a bit more to the left roughly here centered so this is the text for the toggle and you can repeat for the part it's normally around here um, about 300 degrees rotation from the beginning to the end of a part so let's copy here and let's say this one is cold and then we move it and we call this hot maybe space them out a bit <coughs> so usually for for parts um, there are lines on the panel which I choose not to draw because then you have to align the pointer of the knobs to be exactly on the line else it looks off so I just have the text so roughly in the direction pointing towards the text is good enough and then for rotary switch because the switch that I use the nerd ones from Aliexpress are all only 30 degrees rotation and not 45 so you'll be more um, close together so you can have one here again call off it won't let you have two with the same name so you will add a number to it
let's see if this one is like this or let's do it this way and then this one is just one It's around 30 degrees, so it's like 0, 30, 60, and then 90. So And the last one we call it right. There you go. We have all the text. So GR if you want to turn off the grid so it's flat right now you can't see anything if you print you won't be able to see the text so we need to emboss it and raise it by 1 mm so go back to part design for padding before you do that you need to select all the text which are outside the body and move them into the body then one by one you just click on pad default is 10 choose one and repeat note that <coughs> the whole thing becomes sluggish if you have a lot of text that are padded so always pad the text at the very end after you are done with all the holes and recesses so there you go this is a simple panel you can add the text here to name the panel tool but um, let's say we are done here you have to we should name it let's call this um, ox auxiliary Precat froze when I was trying to save so I rename it to demo so before you try to save or export you have to select the body so it selects every element first then you click export and it will say the name dash body because you click on body and click save right so then you open up for example Cura and import it and you will see <coughs> the panel here and you want to slice it I use only 15% infill density which I find is enough you don't need 100 or even 50 sometimes if you are doing just a test you can go as low as 5 and you slice it then you can uh, save it to a thumb drive and bring it to your 3d printer and print okay so this is how you do a simple panel if you appreciate this kind of step-by-step -step tutorials please subscribe and share with your friends 
in the next video I will start showing you the F15 Strike Eagle panel by panel and um, every panel, every knob, every part that is required to build the entire Strike Eagle cockpit will be explained step by step. Thank you for watching.